match. Now, retired Cameroon goalkeeper, uh, I'm allowed to actually call him retired because he actually quit the national team during the World Cup. That's Andrew Nana. He stepped down uh, uh, in the during the World Cup tournament for Cameroon. Now, he seems uh, to be wanted back in the squad. Uh, would you want to give us a clear air on what the situation is over there in Cameroon? It's, it's very tricky because Cameroonians are yet to understand what actually happened, what transpired for Andre Onana to retire in the first place. When uh, he was ousted from the Lions then back in Qatar, no communication was given by the Cameroon Football Federation from the coach, the governor, or the president, Samuel Eto, as to what actually transpired. Onana himself, in his official letter to retire from the uh, national selection, did not mention uh, what actually happened. So there is this air of confusion in uh, Cameroon. No uh, valid reason has been given as to why Agunana was, was, was out there from the den. And now we have the uh, sports minister who comes out to say he is talking directly to the club to uh, release Onana if he's caught the, the Lions den. We are not sure if he has spoken to Onana if there has been some degree of reconciliation in the background between the federation, the coach, and Andrew Onana. So as we speak, Cameroonians are just confused. Even the letter is, uh, itself has some degree of ambiguity to it, uh, because the letter is speaking directly to Inter and asking Inter to let go of the uh, goalkeeper in case he's called. Inter has never withheld Andrew Onana, unlike other clubs uh, are out there in, in Italy that uh, refuse for players to go play for their national selections. We can go on to name yeah. Napoli and the other teams out there, and even other teams in Europe. So we are currently confused. We don't actually know what is actually happening, uh, and we are actually calling it the Andrew Onana saga, because mm. that's exactly what it is. Mm, exactly. Talking about that saga. Now, it sent, uh, there was a correspondence to Inter Milan for the return of the goalkeeper. Now, don't you think the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, um, Kombi, has just triggered a battle between his ministerial department and FECA Food, that is the Cameroon Football Federation? Yes, there are uh, several uh, uh, reports uh, as to a cold war that is currently going on uh, between Nassis Mwele Kombi and Samuel Ito. And we've seen that since the election of Samuel Eto, uh, almost two years now, at uh, the helm of the Cameroon Football Federation, there has been this cold war existing between the president of the Cameroon Football Federation and uh, the uh, sports minister. Because we both hold that the minister was supporting uh, the after president, Sidum Bumbunjoya, during the election period. And there's, uh, there's yet to be this uh, peace talk between him and Samuel Eto. But one thing is certain. It is Cameroonian football that these two personalities want to push forward. It is true. And the one of the best the country has now. If you look at his statistics playing for Inter Milan, especially in the Champions League, he's doing so very much well. And his, his presence in the national selection is very much needed if Cameroon wants to go forward to eventually qualify for Ivory Coast uh, 2023. That's uh, for the Akron that will be next year. Uh, but no player is indispensable, I tell you. If uh, Onana cannot mellow down and gel with the team and play with the team, then he will not be able to continue playing with the national selection. I say this because in two different situations at Inter, Andrew Onana have come under the spotlight and not for the right reasons. The first time, it was a confrontation we had with the player, and just before their last the Champions League game against Napoli, we heard about another confrontation we had with another player uh, during a training session. And when this keeps coming up about the player, then we get to wonder if indeed the player is the problem, or we have a problem with the Cameroon national selection. But whichever way, either it's uh, Andre Onana on the national team, or the coach, or the president, we just want peace to reign, and for us to have this uh, a football player, this a uh, renowned goalkeeper, this world-class goalkeeper back in the day. Now, I'm sure this has not gotten to the hearing of FIFA president Gianni Fantino, who, they've, also, they've always preached that uh, there should never be anything about government interference with sports. Now, it looks like this is happening already in Cameroon, government interfering with what's happening with the football team. And uh, for Samuel Eto and the coach, they said Onana has refused to play according to pattern, and that uh, this led to him resigning or retiring from the national team. Now the uh, minister, which is under the government, says they want the goalkeeper back. Now, in a way, trying to force uh, Onana on that team. Don't you think it's going to create a bit of um, um, confusion uh, and d d division in the football team? Yes. People rules are very clear. The country does not interfere in the running of, of, of the sports in, in any country. And we can go on to name African countries that are currently suffering uh, the predicaments. 
uh, when the uh, people's pleasure map fell on them just because their country, uh, their, uh, their president or their minister got into footballing affairs. Uh, but what uh, we should note here is that in Cameroon, we have the head of state and all instructions come from him because the minister is talking about the fact that these instructions are coming from the presidency mm -hmm. and if the minister is backed by the president of the republic of cameroon uh, who is uh, very much the number one sports personality in the country then i think that uh, will give him a, a leeway to go on to, to to make this request but as yeah. we speak no regulation of fifa has been broken yet uh, none that i'm aware of because he's just making an appeal or mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, reaching out to the club no regulation has been broken yet because they're very careful about that because should Cameroon eventually uh, be sanctioned, then you may see Cameroon missing out on the AFCON qualifiers. They mm -hmm. have a game in hand uh, uh, and, uh, and may not eventually qualify for the uh, competition in, in Ivy Coast. And I'm sure they're very keen on that. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they need to just be a dialogue. Just, that's, what, that's just what needs to be here. Yeah. You should own and return to the Lions then without a dialogue between him and Rigobert Son. Then he will have an upper hand. Mm -hmm. uh, over the coach, and a player cannot have that much influence in a team. Or you should have to go there, some leave the club or leave the, the, the national selection, then and you and can peacefully return. But if you look at uh, the letter uh, Unana published before his resignation, he, he was very much open, or his retirement, he was very much open. He said he still loves the team, uh, he still has, uh, has so much love for the team, which tells you that eventually he's caught back. He will also happily come back to the national selection. He's very young. He can always make his thing. All right. So thank you very much, Valentine Bambot, for your analysis and, of course, your insights of what exactly is happening over there in Cameroon. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much for having me.